Let's just do cheers first. Cheers. Right, cheers. But yeah, like we were talking about before, the cup is uneven. Yeah. So okay, that I've I've always been thinking about that mm -hmm. because I've I've encountered a lot of cups here yeah. that have like this kind of mm -hmm. slanted, yeah, um, kind of build to them, and um, you know, it makes it makes drinking out of them a little tricky. Yeah, or I more I should say it makes filling them up a little tricky. Yeah. 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 I mean, so, so this thing all started with like Sen no Diku, the, the, the tea master who yeah. like was like, he would spend $10,000 to make something look like it was made from $10. You know, is that kind of guy. But yeah. that's, that's where this is. I mean, I like this, but yeah, it's one of the reasons I like living here. But yeah. But so we were going to talk about, yeah, we were going to talk about, um, uh, communities, mm -hmm. uh, communities oh, of foreign. Sorry, before I just want to tell you, Austin is feeling a lot better. You just coughed a little bit, but not because of your sickness. A lot of people are like, Austin, no Daijin, I hope yeah, you yeah. get better. I actually, I was, I was looking at the comments, guys, because I, I do look at the comments for a video. So I appreciate that. Thank you yeah. for worrying about my, my physical and mental health. Yeah. Yeah. But you're all great. Sorry, keep keep on going. Yeah, I've actually I've I'm shaved up a little. Yeah, bit too. yeah. I made my, got my beard a little smaller. My uh. My wife the other day was I commenting on my beard yeah. and I was like, do you like my beard? She's like, <laughs> yeah, I'd like you to make it a little smaller. <laughs> Actually, her words were a little upsetting. She specifically said to make it look like Arthur's beard. Oh, yeah. My wife yeah. likes your beard, apparently. Yeah, I mean, um, so it's like because facial hair isn't like super big here. Yeah. But so so when I first got here, I had a I had a bigger beard. Yeah. But um. Not to me, it was like, when you go meet my grandparents, you have to shave your beard. Oh, and that's, so no, I did it. I had, I had a huge baby face in the beginning. I look <laughs> at those pictures and she was like, yeah, you should just have a beard. So now I go up there. But before I go up there, I make sure that I trim it very well and it looks very nice. Yeah. Because that then they'll accept it. But yeah. if it's a little bit scraggly, no. Nah. I think uh, I think my goal because I've I've been I've been kind of experimenting. I know this is not the topic, but I yeah. want I love beards. Yeah. Um, I've been experimenting a little bit this past summer with beards and kind of like just, just kind of diving into beard culture. Uh, I I carry a beard comb. You have usually. a beard comb? Yeah, I want one. Yeah, I usually um I didn't carry it with me now because my my beard's a little bit too short to comb yeah. it now. Um, but before I I used to carry a beard comb everywhere and yeah. it's like. Uh, you know, you just comb it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, one of the, th well, I've, I've kind of like settled on a goal that I yeah. want with this beard. And, uh, you've seen the movie 300, like King yeah. Leonidas, where yeah. he's got his like pointed beard yeah. like that. So I think that's what I'm going to go for. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to grow like this part yeah. out. Well, you know, in, uh, so where I'm from in the States, there's a big Greek population. And I saw yeah. a dude with like a full Spartan beard kind of yeah. thing. And I, I, for the longest time, I thought that that was like a stylized beard, be beard because they were they were making like bronze statues, and it was hard to make it really like lush looking. But no, this yeah. guy had a straight, just straight. Yeah, like, it was amazing. It's like you could cut glass with that beard. Oh man, it just yeah. looks so cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I'm gonna go for, and uh, hopefully, I'll have lost a little bit of weight by yeah. then too, because it's like you don't want a fat guy with like a cool Spartan yeah. beard. You want like a skinny guy or yeah. like a buff guy. Yeah. So yeah, you just as long as the missus is happy, it's the most important. <laughs> yeah, man. it's true. So um, as you were saying, we were going to talk about yes. So we're going to talk about uh, foreigners who live here in Japan, and um, they've they've managed to group up with groups of either people from their own country or people like of a similar culture, mm -hmm. um, and kind of like things that uh, maybe they would like to see mm -hmm. change here. Yeah. Um, so I personally, um, am in a, uh, board gaming community. Yeah. Here. You're in a board gaming community. Um, and I would say probably 90% of the people in my community are European. Yeah. Um, cause board games are super white men. They are. Yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, we do, we do have people of other races, yeah. but yeah, it's mostly a white guy thing. Yeah. Um, and, uh. First of all, I, I will say that um, I think I've talked about it on on previous episodes, mm -hmm. how important it is to join a community yeah, when you move right. here, um, because there's a lot of people who end up uh, moving to Japan and they're not Japanese mm -hmm. and they just they don't have any friends. Yeah. 
And I, I'm constantly asked, like I get asked this at work. I get asked this, mm-hmm. uh, you know, people I meet. It's like, I don't understand how you have friends. Like yeah. you always talk about going and hanging out with your friends on the mm-hmm. weekend and going, going and doing stuff with your friends. Like, how do you make friends? And mm-hmm. it's just like, I look, I don't go to the friend store and be like, well, I'd like <laughs> one of those friends, please. Buy one, get one free. Oh my God. Wow. You have the same hobby as me. What a coincidence. Like, no, that's, that's not how you make Although, friends. To, to be honest, like, if there was a friend store somewhere, it would probably be in Japan. Yeah. 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 That's actually really sadly true. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so it's... <clears throat> You don't you don't go out looking for friends. You go out looking for a place to participate in your hobby. Mm-hmm. So in my for my example, um, one of the hobbies that I'm really connected to is uh, a game called Warhammer. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like a tabletop game. You build like plastic models mm-hmm. and stuff. Uh, you you build and I, I don't paint them. I actually pay my friend to do it. But okay. um, you go play games with that, right? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like a nerdy thing, but um, it's it's a big social thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? it's a community thing. It's a really big social thing. I would I would compare it to stuff like uh like Magic the Gathering, yeah, the right. card the game. The card game. Um so you you go out to places and you play with people, right? Mm-hmm. And so when I moved over here, it's like yeah, I was really enthusiastic uh you know to participate in Japanese mm-hmm. culture and you know experience Japan, but I'm not Japanese. Yeah. You know? And because I'm not Japanese, that means there's part of me that that still wants that like mm-hmm. side of American culture mm-hmm. that I was used to. It's yeah. like, you know, when when people move over here, they they still have part of them that, you know, wants to connect to yeah. their culture and their identity, mm-hmm. right? And so that's what I did when I first moved over here. Mm-hmm. I looked out and sure enough, it's mm-hmm. Tokyo. You can find any community in Tokyo. Um and I found a Warhammer mm-hmm. community and that's how I made my first friends when I moved mm-hmm. here. You know, I just, uh, you know, there, there was a line group that I joined mm-hmm. for the store and I started talking with some guys and it's like, Hey, cool. You live, you live here in, uh, where's, where's David? Uh, he lives in Setagaya, mm-hmm. right? Which is kind of up near Shibuya. Um, and he's like, Oh man, dude, you live like 40 minutes away from mm-hmm. me. Let's, let's go meet up and let's yeah, right. play a game. Right. And so my friendship kind of evolved with mm-hmm. that. Now it's like, I mean, you met David. He yeah. came to my wedding. Yeah, he's a it's nice like guy. He's, he's a really good friend of mine yeah. now. Um, and it's like a lot of my friendships have evolved because of these communities, mm-hmm. right? Um, so for for the sake of your mental health and I would mm-hmm. say your, your social health mm-hmm. as a person, if you're moving over here, that I cannot stress mm-hmm. enough how important it is to not not necessarily look out and find a community, but understand what your hobby is mm-hmm. if if you have one if you don't have one get a hobby mm-hmm. and then find a place to do your hobby yeah. and you will make friends doing that mm-hmm. it's like i i always hear about people who uh are really into like bouldering yeah like, bouldering and so they'll go places and you know it turns out they'll just meet people bouldering and mm-hmm. you know now you have a friend and you have a little buddy to do that with yeah well i mean that's like so to be honest like that's not the reason why I got into it, but that's one of the reasons why I'm still really deep in this whole coffee yeah. world and stuff because I've met so many people through this, not even just in Japan, yeah. but outside of Japan too, you know? Like yeah. I, I got invited to go to Milan for something. That oh, was really? really? cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, no. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah, and then <laughs> I got invited to go to like a like a, a coffee exhibition here, but it wasn't yeah. just that. It's like making connections with people. So you were you telling know? you were telling me about that exhibition and yeah. when, wasn't the company that you like kind of like hung out with and yeah. volunteer. they were from the philippines right yeah right so so what happened was is so i have a for all of you guys who like coffee i have a channel for american people where i make coffee using a very strange espresso machine and uh it's very nerdy but i yeah. like it and it's a really heavy metal box yeah it's a very heavy <laughs> metal box it's like it's like 20 kilos almost yeah. um but yeah so so i would I would basically just make coffee mm. on that channel and film it. Yeah. And someone from the Philippines was like, hey, we have this Filipino coffee. We want to show that Filipino coffee is good. Can you make some coffee on your channel? And I did. And that was about a year and a half ago. And then just like last week, this person's living in Japan, by the way. And they're just like, hey, we have the Tokyo Coffee Expo. And can you come help us? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And what was interesting for me was, um, so I went to this exhibition and... I didn't 
it was for Japanese people. So there was, it was like mainly Japanese people who were going. But even though it was a coffee exhibition, so many people were like, hey, are you Arthur from YouTube? About my English YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Because coffee super international. So a lot of people in the coffee also are learning English. It's yeah. like, oh, that's how it melts, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and it's just, it's it's really interesting. Like, you know, it's it's kind of the same thing in my in my community. How um, I I would say it's the my community is still predominantly foreigners, yeah. but we've we've melded into um, the Japanese community as well. Like my my local gaming spot is this hole in the wall izakaya mm -hmm. that's underground in Yokohama. Oh, really? It's it's like. I'm I'm gonna be honest. This building's really dirty. <laughs> yeah, like it. You go there and you're just like, "What is this place? Yeah. It, this seems really kind of sketchy." Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the the guy that we hang out there. Uh, he's he's this older Japanese guy. He's mm -hmm. he's kind of a nerdy yeah. guy who's been in the community for a while. He opened up this gaming izakaya mm -hmm. there, and so that's where we play. Yeah, and um, you know. Over time, like we've we've had Japanese mm -hmm. people join our community, and it's it's great. So yeah. it's it's like it really feels like an international group now. Yeah, yeah. But I do have to say though. So so speaking of what you were saying is really good for foreigners when they first come here. But what I've also noticed is mm. I've had many, not many. I don't actually have many friends. I have some friends. That <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lonely. No. Um. So so I remember I had a friend who lived in Japan, and mm. he wanted to move here. But he couldn't speak Japanese very yeah. well. And he ended up like having no Japanese friends. And he yeah. was only hanging out with um, English speaking people. And yep. like the Japanese people that he did meet were already fluent in English. Yeah. And, and it was kind of an interesting thing because he was living in Japan. Yeah. But he didn't have to use Japanese at all. Mm. And then he was talking about how his Japanese is not improving. Mm. But then he didn't try to... He would try to improve his Japanese a little bit, but then you just hang out with people yeah. speaking English. And it's like, I see a lot of foreigners here. They kind of isolate themselves and they yeah. just like stay only with foreigners here. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. I mean, I've I've met a number of uh, like English teachers yeah. here that have been living here for like 17, 20 mm -hmm. years and they can't speak a lick of Japanese. Well, to be um, honest, the only friend that I made at the school that I used to work at was you. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's probably because we both spoke the same language, you mm. know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, if if you're in a situation mm -hmm. where you're you're worried about only being exposed to English, mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't know if this works for everybody, but I this this works for me. I yeah. hate studying. Yeah. I absolutely hate studying, and I've tried studying Japanese, and I I just can't sit down and mm -hmm. read a book. Mm -hmm. That's just not how I learn things. Yeah. Um, I, I had the same problem when I was in school, like mm -hmm. when I was in high school and you know when I was in university. It's just, I, I, I just can't open a book and mm -hmm. get that information out. Yeah. Um, I, need, I, need to, I need to play with it. Yeah. Right? And um, so I've, I found that like, you know, I've talked with my wife before mm -hmm. And I've I've talked with people at my school before. It's like, okay, we're gonna have like a Japanese day mm -hmm. yeah. where it's like we don't we don't try to speak English at all. Yeah. And I found what happens when I'm in that situation, I just get tired. Yeah. And it becomes not fun. Yeah. Right? It's just like I don't wanna do this. And it's yeah. like it just feels like uh bothersome yeah. to do it. So what I ended up doing is I I just put myself in situations where I can't mm -hmm. um I can't use my English. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not like forcing myself mm -hmm. to speak Japanese. I just can't use my English. Yeah. Right? And so like, what's the situation like? So that? a perfectly good situation is um at work I um I try and talk to uh the teachers. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, not not the English department teachers. Mm -hmm. I mean like I try to have relationships with the with the other teachers mm -hmm. at my school or mm -hmm. like math, history, Japanese, yeah. like all those teachers. And none of those teachers speak English. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, it'll just be simple. It started off with simple conversations like, oh, hello, how mm -hmm. how was yesterday? You know, that kind of thing. And over time, I got more confident with my Japanese ability. Um, you know, and it's the same thing at home. Like my wife, I mean, Yui's English is pretty yeah. all right. Yeah. Um, but Yui prefers to speak Japanese. Yeah. Um, and 
Uh, so because of that, it's uh, once again put me in this situation mm-hmm. where I mean I could use my English, but it's it's just kind of yeah. troublesome for her. So yeah. like we'll use Japanese a lot, and again, it's one of these situations where it's just like I. I'm not forcing myself mm-hmm. to speak. Mm-hmm. I'm just I can't use my English. Yeah, you know, and that that has like skyrocketed my progression yeah, right? for learning Japanese because yeah. it it doesn't feel like I'm learning. Yeah, it's it just feels like I'm living mm-hmm. in Japanese language. Yeah, you know, uh, and it makes a huge difference. Like I don't feel burnout yeah. at all. Well, that's, that's what I have my students do, and that's yeah. why they improve. You know, yeah, because like the whole thing is like. Like English and Japanese, whatever, they're tools for communication, right? Yes. And like, if you could speak in in English, but you're going to try and speak in Japanese, that makes no sense because you can communicate better in English. Yeah. And that's like saying I have a like a like a a, a screw. Yeah. And I'm going to use it's like a what what do you call it plus sign? No, Phillips is the flathead, right? What do you call what? it? Plus sign? No, Phillips. Uh, Phillips is the plus sign. Oh, Phillips is the plus yeah. sign. Okay. Yeah. I, th- I, just, I think. I, oh God! Anyways. Now you're making me double. <laughs> okay. So I'm say, not a handyman. I'm not. I, I know. I, I know. I, I maybe have to give up my man card yeah, now. Yeah, I know. Seriously, <laughs> I'll give you my man card now. So no. So like a like a plus yeah. head screw. Yeah. And you're going to use a flathead screwdriver to open it, right? You could do it, but it's not made for that. You yeah. know, that's like trying to use Japanese when you could use English. Yeah. You have to. You have to have to use. Yeah. Japanese, and then you'll actually use it and improve. Yeah. You know? And it's just like, I I, I think I, I want to do, it's my turn to do a little analogy now. I okay. Wanna, I want to throw my analogy out there. I think of it as like a bicycle in, a, in like a car. Okay. Right. And let's say you live like 45 minutes away from mm-hmm. your work. Drive. By, by driving your car. Yeah. Right. And you could take your bicycle there, but it's going to take like two hours to yeah. get there. And it's just a pain in the ass. Yeah. Right? It's just far easier, far more comfortable to drive your car. Yeah. However, if you just want to go to like your local supermarket, which is like, I don't know, like two minutes from yeah. your house, it's more comfortable to ride your bike. Yeah, right. You don't have to look for parking. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like if you're putting yourself in situations where it's comfortable for mm-hmm. you to use the language, that's that's when you're going to yeah. pick up and learn something. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because it's like I'll, I'll get students at my school. I, I know this is not anywhere near the topic, but no, I, totally I love fine, talking totally about fine, this. Go for it. I'll get students at my school who are like really hardcore into studying English. Yeah, and it's like I I I constantly tell my students that like English is not a language like math. Yeah, right. If you study math. You can learn math. Yeah. You you actually, if you're good at studying, you actually don't need a math teacher. Yeah, right. Right? You just need to understand how things work and then be able to apply that mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. and boom, you'll understand math. It doesn't work that way with English. Yeah, you can't right. just look at English and be like, oh, get in my head. I will learn this language. Like that's not- <laughs> Get in my head, English. You know? Yeah. It doesn't work yeah. like that because like- I, I would say the best comparison to learning a language is exercising. Well, I would say it's like riding a bike. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. By exercising, same thing. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, you'll get people who go to the gym mm-hmm. and are just like, oh, I want to be buff. Mm-hmm. I want to be buff now. Yeah. And they'll just be like, you know, just power lifting every single day. And it's just like, you know, lifting weights, you'll get buff yeah. from lifting weights. But th- what really happens is... Mm-hmm. Uh, putting yourself in a routine yeah. and putting yourself into a discipline yeah. that you'll stick to something. And that, that's the same with language. It's yeah. like putting yourself into a situation that you're going to be using this language and yeah. you're not going to get tired of it. Mm-hmm. You know, Dude, you're just like advertising my program right ah, now. Join Arthur's program. Thank you. I <laughs> teach you how to make friends with English speakers so that you don't have to study English. You just improve anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just like listening to this. I'm like, I did not pay Austin to say this, but this is a great advertisement. So Arthur, that'll be uh, ten thousand dollars, please. Okay, I'll give you twenty. Uh, yeah, if you could, if you could just fund my uh, my education for the next two years, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I would love to if I had that money, but I don't. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, no, it's 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 kind of like ironic what I see because so I know that there are some people who come to Japan and like let's say they're they're immigrants from from other countries like maybe Southeast Asia mm. or from India or something or even Africa, you know, yeah. they'll they'll come here and they're coming here to live, to have a better life, whatever. Yeah. And they tend to stick into their 
their communities, right? Yeah. And you also have that with like the Europeans or the Americans who come here too. Oh, very much but so. But I feel like it's for different reasons. Like yeah. I, I feel like for for most Americans who come here and do that is just because you're lazy. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, I I definitely get that. I mean, I I it, I kind of th think it depends on the situation. Like, I think, you know, like you'll see a lot of Americans here mm -hmm. uh, that are in the military. Okay, and you can kind of give those guys a little bit of a break because it's yeah. like, for many of them, they didn't really choose to live in and Japan, the, and they're forced to live on the base. Yeah, and they're forced to live on the base. So it's like, um, something that I actually, uh. I guess this kind of goes against the topic, but something I actually want to praise Japan for is, it, well, probably Tokyo more mm -hmm. than the whole of Japan, but um, they've actually made it really accommodating to people who have no Japanese skill whatsoever. That and is true. Honestly, don't even understand Japanese culture. Yeah. Um, I think Tokyo is very, very accommodating. Like, if you're coming here and you literally know nothing about mm -hmm. Japan, mm -hmm. You can come to Tokyo now and navigate around yeah. and visit stuff. Whereas I think like 15 years ago, that, mm. that was an impossible yeah. task. Yeah. There was no way, you know, yeah. like, like nowadays, like the trains have updated. So many of, especially the JR trains in Tokyo have the little computers, which are really easy to read. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I'm going to be honest with you. I've been living here seven years and that stupid map that hangs up yeah. in the subway I cannot understand what that map yeah. is saying. They have like 10 different train lines and they have like a rainbow of trains coming yeah. around. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, this train's on going and stopping at this yeah. stop. And I'm just like, oh man, I didn't yeah. even look and see what kind of train. Am I in the Futsu Densha? Are we on the Tokyu Densha? Like, yeah. I didn't even look, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I really appreciate having... Um, having the like the computers and stuff uh it's really great that a lot of like the signs have started mm -hmm. changing like having japanese and english and mm -hmm. actually they'll have chinese and korean now in yeah, many right. places too yeah. um so i feel like japan's really made an attempt mm -hmm. to like open themselves up yeah to... and, yeah and they also have like a lot of um like translation services yeah. or or interpretation services yeah. especially at the shiaksho the kuyaksho areas yeah. which i think is really nice yeah um the one, the one small little itty bitty thing that I would, that I really wish is, uh, recently I've had to experience going to the immigration office hmm. and, uh, so I don't know what the DMV is like in Japan. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that is. What I, that's I, here. I like to imagine that, that place is what's, a pretty, what's the DMV. So the department of motor vehicles, mm -hmm. um, okay. if you talk to an American, uh, that is basically hell. Yeah, it's uh, where you get your driver's license yes. and do car related stuff. Yeah, so everyone hates that <laughs> yeah. place. Yeah. Um and I get similar feelings when I go to uh the immigration office here. Yeah. Um specifically um one thing that I would like to see change mm -hmm. and I think a lot of foreign groups would really appreciate this is just maybe toning down the bureaucracy a little bit yeah. because I, I'll tell you, hey, we don't have a lot of time left, but yeah. I want to tell you this this last yeah, yeah, story. Yeah. Um, so I, I needed to renew my visa mm -hmm. and I live in Kanagawa, yeah. right? So I went to the immigration office in Kanagawa yeah. and we went through this paperwork and sat there for three hours and then uh, the guy couldn't speak any English, yeah. uh, but I brought my wife so we could, we could translate stuff. Yeah. Um, and we got all this paperwork filled out and then he's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, you don't have this, so come back tomorrow. Yeah. And it's like... Okay. Yeah. Come back tomorrow, right? Start filling out everything. We're there for another three hours. We get everything done. And like my daughter's with us. It's yeah, like yeah, this yeah. really uncomfortable situation. And we get everything filled out. And then after everything's filled out, he comes up and is like, uh, so actually your Zyru card was issued in Tokyo. And uh yeah, I can't help you. Yeah, you have to do it in Tokyo now. And I'm right? just like you waited this long to tell yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, Like, you know, uh, so it's just like, dude, come on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we had to go in uh, to Shinagawa and, you know, go through that process mm -hmm. and everything and do everything all over again. And eventually it got solved. But it's yeah. just like, uh, yeah. I think there's a lot of foreign groups that get really frustrated with mm -hmm. a lot of like the bureaucracy here. Yeah. 
you know, I, I feel like so if that if that was kind of in the United States, I would understand because like there's a lot more division between the states in Japan. But yeah, in Japan, but the prefectures, like... but it, but in Japan, the prefectures are all kind of united, you yeah. know. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. So like, I, uh, <laughs> I I feel like they could communicate and talk with each other. A little I mean, more, it's Kanagawa and Tokyo. We're not like, even talking about like Shizuoka yeah, or no, like Yamanashi cool. or something. It's like you're telling me that Kanagawa and Tokyo can't talk to each other to make this paperwork work. Yeah. Uh, well, anyways. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so there are parts that are friendly to foreigners, parts that are still very bureaucratic. But yeah. if you can make friends, yeah. If if you want to make friends, you can make friends. And for all foreigners who come to Japan, especially Tokyo, it's very easy to make friends. Yeah. Don't use that as an excuse and say you can't make friends. If you can't make friends, please leave a comment here and we will criticize you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the reality. <laughs> no, no, we'll, 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 we'll help you if this is we can. Thanks. All right, man. This is good talking to you. See you. I did it again. This is good talking to you. See you next time. Yeah.